Greetings everyone, welcome to the lecture on evolution of uh, paintings uh, specifically with the reference to miniature art in India. In this lecture, I shall be talking about the chronological evolution of miniature art. We have already discussed the important role that was played by Babur. Now talking about Humayun, Humayun brought back with him the master artists when he regained power in India. So he invited two Persian artists, Mir Sayyid Ali and Abdus Samad to establish a studio in his court and carry out royal paintings. A bibliophile of discerning sensitivity, Humayun's rule began a period of intense patronage for the art of painting as well as calligraphy. And from Humayun onwards, we see that there was great interest in building an artistic repertoire and an imperial atelier. This also is an indication of uh, a ruler's artistic taste and also helps us from, a, from the point of view of Humayun as a connoisseur and as an aesthetic ruler. He founded the Negar Khana, that is a painting workshop, which also became a part of his library. He started the project of illustration of Hamza Nama that was later on continued by his son and successor Akbar. Open air painting with trees and blossoms and royal merrymaking, all these depicted uh, important themes uh, which were carried on by Humayun. The format, theme, figures and color were remarkably Persian during this period. But soon this vocabulary started changing and we see that there was an accommodation of different styles and uh, distinct imperial taste evolved. So there was a shift now away from a complete Persian style two styles that were more an intermixture of the indigenous as well as the Persian styles. Now the next important contribution was made by Akbar who ruled from 1556 to 1605. So Abul Fazal who was the court historian of Akbar has written about Akbar's specific passion for arts and he has recorded uh, that there were more than 100 artists that were employed in the royal atelier. This included some very skilled Persian as well as many indigenous Indian artists of those times and hence a unique style evolved during this period. These artists undertook many ambitious projects which established a new kind of endeavor uh, and a, a very important painting that came up was Babur inspecting the fort of Gwalior uh, in 1598. Akbar believed to be suffering from dyslexia which was a common condition where a person finds it difficult to read laid great emphasis on illustration of manuscripts. It was under the patronage of Akbar that several uh, important projects of translation and illustration of manuscripts were also carried out. The earliest of his projects was the continuation of his father's artistic legacy of Hamza Nama, which was an illustrated account of the heroic deeds of Hamza, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad. Akbar took great delight in hearing the stories of Hamza, a character which was who was much loved in the Middle East. Uh, and uh, also he engaged professional narrators to kind of uh, read out stories. Simultaneously, the corresponding folios and uh, were painted and the Hamza Nama narrative was uh, developed further. Emperor took keen interest in both the pictorial narrative as well as in recitation. And because of the peculiar function of these paintings, their format also sometimes was large. The basic surface was cloth with paper at the back on which the narrative text 
is written to help the narrator and the technique applied is gouache which is water based and in opaque colors mughal paintings were largely a team work by a group of artists who could be inspired by a number of artistic traditions the immediate natural surroundings became the most important resource from which several images of flora and fauna were developed the painted folios of hamza nama uh, are found all over the world and also are part of several collections uh, it is recorded to have consisted of around 14 volumes with more than 1400 illustrations and it took almost 15 years uh, for this to be completed now this is one of the uh, visuals from hamza nama which is uh, uh, regarding a famous uh, uh, narrative about spy zanbar who was bringing mahia to the city of tawarik uh, this is another visual which is being uh, shown uh, which is the prophet elias rescuing prince noor adhar from drowning in a river as you can see the suggested date of this magnificent project was probably from 1567 to 1582 and the two master persian uh, uh, artists who were responsible for this were mir sayed ali and abd as samad In Hamza Nama painting spies attack the city of Kemar the space is sharply cut and divided so as to facilitate visual reading of the narrative too much of action was shown in this visual and the use of vibrant colors was specifically uh, 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 employed to unfold a story okay uh, and also a strong outer line defined the foliage and several other forms the rich intricate patterns on the floor columns and canopy were from persian sources uh, also the four limbed animals and rocks also had persian influence trees and creepers indicated indian sources as also the rich palette of pure colors like yellows reds and browns uh, had that indian element akbar envisioned cultural integration and therefore commissioned translation of several revered hindu texts as well he commissioned translation and illustration of several sanskrit texts into persian so one such example that one can talk about is razam nama which was the persian translation and illustrated version of epic mahabharata uh, that was done and it was completed uh, uh, around 1589 under the supervision of master artist daswant this manuscript was inscribed in ornate calligraphy and it contained around 169 paintings the translation and illustration of ramayana was also carried out during this period artists like govardhan and miskin were uh, very important as far as uh, developing visuals of court scenes uh, are concerned akbar nama which was an extraordinary manuscript it contained a detailed account of akbar's political as well as personal life and he engaged uh, personally with the artists and supervised their artworks the mughal painting un under akbar's patronage depicted a variety of subjects which included political conquests campaigns court scenes secular texts portraits of important uh, individuals uh, several hindu mythologies persian and islamic themes and so on and so forth Akbar's fascination for Indian scriptures uh, also made him one of the most popular emperors of the country. So we see that evolution of miniature art was a never-ending process. Mughal rulers were patrons of painting. It was during Akbar's rule 
that Persian and Indian art styles were fused to form a rich mixed style. And during his reign, European influence played a very significant role in the development of Mughal miniature art. In 1580, Akbar received in his court the first Jesuit priests who presented him with a copy of Glossetta Bible embellished with Flemish impression. And after 1595, we see that Akbar ordered his artists to transcript or copy them. Soon other European paintings were brought to his court and a lot of research went into them and color ver colored versions of Durer's engravings were also attempted. As a result, Mughal artists began to use perspective. They started experimenting with the light and shade. They started lowering the horizons in the pictures and started representing the sky in a more practical manner with cloud positioning and blazing sunsets. All this was being done as a result of interaction with European style. After 1595, Mughal painting disclosed the assimilation of western techniques, modeling of three-dimensional figures by using shading and also a limited modification of perspective. In most of the paintings produced from the time that the Europeans were in contact with Akbar's court, we can see an increasing preference for a category of naturalism adapted to complement the growing diversity in medieval India. So, a number of examples can be given. For example, Madonna and Child that was developed in 1580. It was done in opaque watercolor on paper uh, and is an important early work of Mughal school of painting in this context. From the arrival of Jesuit missionaries to the court of the Mughal emperor Akbar, uh, a lot, uh, many new developments took place. Christian imagery was depicted by Mughal artists in works on paper. Both Akbar and his son, Prince Salim, the future Emperor Jahangir, who ruled from 1605 to 1627, they were fascinated by such depictions and scenes from the life of Christ portraits of Christ, Virgin Mary and many other scenes that were based on imagery from religious texts and these were frequently created by their artists. Now coming to the reign of Jahangir, peculiar to Jahangir's reign uh, was the representation of Christian figures as architectural decoration uh, and also in the form of wall paintings. One of the most important depicted of these figures was that of the Virgin Mary. She appears as decoration within Jahangir's royal audience halls in a pavilion at the Lahore Shahi Kila and she was depicted within the gateway to the tomb complex of Itmadu Dola, Jahangir's father-in-law and is supposed to have been represented within the burial chamber of Akbar's tomb in Sikandara as well. So this speaks volumes about the close relationship that was developing between the Mughals and the Jesuits which was also reflected in art and culture. And it is fascinating to notice the Indian and Persian influence on the paintings uh, as well as the features of Madonna and Christ. The Armenians who had two churches in Delhi, both of which were destroyed by Nadir Shah in 1739, they used to hold a Christmas drama at which Mughal nobles and Rajput chieftains were among the prominent invitees. So they sought emperor's presence at the play in 1625-26 and Jahangir agreed as he sometimes used to attend a similar kind of uh, ceremony that was held in Agra since his father's time. So at that play, 
records the Franciscan annals, little boys and girls, they used to dress as angels and they took part on Christmas night. The emperor was present and rose petals were showered on him. Earlier, on Christmas morning, Akbar used to come to the church uh, he had ordered to be built with the courtiers to see the representation of the cave in which Jesus was born and the good shepherds kept watch. Later on, the ladies of his harem also visited the manga. Jahangir once presented beeswax candles at the church at Lahore through uh, which he was uh, conducted like a bishop to the chiming of bells and singing of carols. The paintings that were commissioned by Akbar and Jahangir, they were a blend of Western iconography with Indian and Islamic elements. So now we see a fourth element being integrated uh, and uh, a very important example of one such uh, integrative style is that of a virgin and a child dating 1600 to 1625. So in this painting, Mary watches over baby Jesus who held her hand and grasped flowers. As you can see in this visual, not to miss the use of subtle colors, the softness which is clearly indicative of European style. Another example, again, so these were specific paintings with Christianity as the backdrop. A folio from the Mughal Bible showing the nativity scene. The painting shows the limited knowledge of the painters as there are two Maggies instead of three and there is a bejeweled Mary with the architecture popular in Islamic kingdoms as a background instead of a stable. So there was enough of mixing and matching that was being done and without going into too much of detailing uh, about a specific culture, what they were trying to create was uh, a kind of a mixture of all the styles and the result was that the background could be Islamic whereas the theme could be Christian. Uh, another example, Madonna in this painting that was just shown to you is an extraordinary theme which brought the Byzantine art the European classical art as well as the Mughal atelier together and as a result uh, a completely different visual experience emerged as a result of so much of fusion and experimentation. Virgin Mary is draped in a classical manner. The attachment displayed between the mother and the child was inspired by the humanist interpretation in the European Renaissance art. The physiology of the child, certain details like the fan, jewellery, etc. integrated the work to an Indian milieu. Inspired by Akbar's interest in arts, many sub-imperial courts also absorbed this passion and several great works of art were produced for aristocratic families who tried to copy the Mughal court atelier taste and produced works that present distinctive projects, subjects as well as visual preferences but in regional flavour. Akbar had formalised the Mughal miniature style and set very high standards which were further taken to new heights by his son Jahangir between 1605 to 1627. Unlike his father, Akbar, who commissioned paintings and manuscripts of politically and religiously 
important subjects. Uh, Jahangir had a curious taste and he also had great eye for delicate observations and very fine details. So, Madonna with infant Jesus which is attributed to 17th century uh, is a very good example uh, of miniature art and this also was on a UK stamp in 2005 Christmas as you can see in this visual. The theme is Christian but the faces as you can see and even the attire seems to be Indian. Then another very good example of paintings as they developed under Jahangir is that of Jahangir holding a picture of Madonna inscribed in Persian. This particular painting can be seen in National Museum. Another very good example is that of adoration of the Christ child developed in 1630 in Golconda, Deccan. So, Jahangir employed Akha Riza, a well-known Iranian painter and his son Abul Hassan to achieve unparalleled sophistication in this art. Despite the formalized and established imperial atelier of Akbar, the keen patron in Jahangir was a rebel and so he started his own atelier along with his fathers. Uh, and as a result, many more works of art were produced. Tuzukke Jahangiri, the memoirs of Jahangir, tells about his great interest in arts and his efforts also of achieving scientific correctness in the rendering of flora and fauna. Under his patronage, Mughal painting achieved naturalism as well as some kind of scientific accuracy. The curiosity as well as the wonder that Jahangir had for nature and people around him is also reflected in the kind of works that he commissioned. In contrast to Akbar's atelier, where most of the works were mass produced, Jahangir's atelier gave more preference to a lesser number but a better quality of artworks. Uh, also, they were produced by single master artists. The murakkas that is individual paintings to be mounted in albums became very popular under Jahangir's patronage. As you can see on the screen, this particular painting depicted the presentation of the infant Jesus in the temple at Jerusalem 40 days after his birth. This painting developed between 1600 to 1610. Then Christ seated in a palace chamber with a female devotee crouching at his feet, surrounded by male courtiers. Again, a European style dress. This was the Mughal depiction of Virgin Mary and Jesus. Another very interesting painting was that of Archangel Raphael, developed in 1590. The margins of the paintings that were made under Jahangir were highly illuminated in gold and they were also embellished with flora, fauna and also sometimes human figures. The war scenes, portraits, narrative and storytelling were largely prevalent in Akbar styles, uh, were now replaced by minuter details and a refined rendering of lavish court scenes, aristocracy, royal personalities and also distinct flora and fauna. Jahangir was presented with paintings and decorative objects depicting high arts from Europe as gifts from the Europeans who frequently visited his court. So, having come into greater contact uh, with the English crown, Jahangir's fascination for European art and theme further propelled him to have more such works in his collection. 
many celebrated religious Christian themes were produced in the royal atelier of Jahangir. Given this cultural and artistic exposure, European art sensibilities started making their way into the prevalent Indo-Iranian style, thereby making Jahangir School of Art far more impressive, experimental as well as vibrant. The spatial depth of the composition and naturalistic representation of life reflects the high benchmarks that the sensitive patron created for art during his lifetime. Thank you.